Hello and welcome. In this quite long video, we are going to make Star Wars themed scene. I have kept this scene really simple, and we are only going to use my provided assets and Megascan assets that are free to use. As this course is for complete beginners, I will walk you through creating your own first project, and will show you project settings that I use. I will give brief introductions on Unreal Engine 5 UI and will show you how you can import my provided assets into your project. Then I will talk about materials and textures. As a base for our character, I will create my own metahuman that later on I will customize inside Unreal Engine. After that, I will finally set up scene using only few Megascan assets and by doing simple light adjustments, I will bring my scene to life. At the end, I will show you how you can create simple assets to add extra detail to your scene and how to create nice looking renders. Hello guys, my name is Mars Fremenis and I hope you're gonna learn something new in this course. If at any point you feel like you want to know more about a certain topic, I encourage you to check Unreal Engine documentation that will give you more in-depth information. You can always ask your questions at my Discord channel where I hope you're gonna showcase your work. Let's start creating. Start by creating Unreal Engine 5 project. I will be using Unreal Engine 5.1.1, but you can use any Unreal Engine 5 version to follow along this course. Let's launch the engine. So in Unreal Engine Project Browser, we will be using the game Blank Project. So click Game Blank. Give your project a name. I'm going to call my project Star Wars. Make sure Starter Content is enabled and press Create. When you get to launch your Unreal Engine Project, the first thing you're going to see is your viewport. Your viewport is your 3D workspace. You can move the camera while holding the right mouse click. To move around, the same like in the video games, you can use W, A, S, and D. If, you're, if you feel like your camera is moving really slow, you can change your camera speed over here. And we can set it up to 8, and now we can see the camera is moving really fast. To go up and down, we can use E and Q. Now let's go over some US stuff. The first and the most important thing is your content drawer. This is where you can find all your assets. You can access it to multiple ways. The first thing is right down here. You can toggle it, but if you click somewhere else, it disappears. If you want to permanently have it down there, you can go to the window, content browser, content browser. For example, if you're like me and you like multiple of them, you can just go again, window, content browser, and enable another one. And you can put it as a tab, so you have two of them, or you can just put them side by side and work in two folders at the same time. Let's take a look what we have in the folders. Let's go to the started content. Let's scroll down and let's go to the props. In this folder, we can see some pretty simple assets. Let's drag one in. Nice, we have this chair. While it's selected, we can see there's a detail panel. Detail panel gives you the basic information about the meshes, like lo location, rotation, scale, what kind of mesh you have selected, what kind of material is applied, and any object can have even more parameters. For example, if you select landscape, we can see there's different parameters. Sky Sphere can have different parameters. And you can see all assets that are available in your scene over here in Outliner. Now let's go back to the mesh. Let's select it. And what we can do is we can move it around. If you go, we can just move it around and up and down. We can also rotate it. Select rotation tool, you can also just press E and we can just rotate. And we can also scale our mesh. Here's a scale or you can just press R, we can scale our mesh. You can always undo things by just pressing Ctrl Z. And you're gonna set up your workspace is really up to you and it really depends what makes you comfortable. For example, for me, I love always to see my content browsers. For example, these, usually I like to toggle them. So one thing you can do is go, for example, to Outliner, make a right click, and choose Dock Sidebar, and it's going to appear here. And I can do the same thing with Details, and it gives me a bigger viewport. And when I, for example, need to access something, I can just click here, do what I need, and I can go back. Before we're moving forward, we need to change a few project settings. I would suggest you to read some documentation in it, but these are basically settings I usually set up for every project. Let's I go to Edit, Project Settings. First thing we can do is we're just going to scroll down, and under platforms, let's click on the windows and make sure that the X12 is enabled, SM6. If it's not, then ticket should be on by default. Then we could go back up and under engine, let's search for render. 
We found rendering. Now we can go down. And let's make sure that dynamic global illumination method is set to lumen. Reflection method set to the lumen. Now depending from the what kind of GPU you have, if it supports the ray tracing, I always like to enable ray tracing. Click yes. Also use hardware ray tracing when possible and making sure that service cache is enabled. If your graphic card doesn't support ray tracing, it's fine. You're still going to get really beautiful results. So before we are restarting our project, there's one more thing we can enable and it's virtual textures. Let's search for virtual and let's find enable virtual texture support. And I can disable this automatic conversion. I will explain what it means a bit later. For now, let's just restart the engine. We just don't need to save this. Grab a coffee and see you back. So once we are back, next thing we're going to do is to import a few extra files into our project. You can find my project files into the Discord. Discord link is down below. So the easiest way to access the content of your project is go to the content folder right here. Make a right click and click show in Explorer. So it's going to go straight to your project folder. So if you go back, there's your project and there is a content folder. So now go to the folder that I put in the Discord. Let's copy the root folder like called Star Wars. So make a click of it, copy and paste it in to our project. And we can see that it right away appears here. We can minimize this and we can see that there's three folders inside blade. Dark Mall and Scimitar. First to the Scimitar folder. Here we can see our model, the spaceship. We can just drag it in into the scene. You can adjust it. Let's move it a bit up. And every time you're going to import a model in Unreal Engine, it's going to create a generic material. If you don't see, for example, material when you import your mesh, you can always create your own one by making a right click and choose material. Let's open it up and let's take a look. This is basically the how the materials operate and look in Unreal Engine. There's a lot of options, different kind of combinations, how you can set it up, but we're going to take a look later how complicated materials can get when we're going to take a look at the metahuman material. But for now, we're just going to talk about a few parameters. Basic color, metallic, roughness, emissive color, and normal. We can start with a basic color. We can adjust the color of our ship and we can just move it and we can see the color of our shape is changing. By the way, if you're missing this and want to create a new one, for example, let's delete this, we can hold key number three, make a click, and we can create a new one. We can just plug it in. And by the way, if you don't see any changes updating in your scene, you need to recompile your material. You can just recompile it and the color applies. And I want to just put it back to the gold. And I'm just going to recompile it again. The next parameter we're going to talk about, it's called metallic. To control it, you would need to create a variable. Let's hold number one and let's create it. Let's connect it to the metallic and let's compile it. We can see that right now at zero, there's no changes. It looks plastic and that's how it should be. The kind of the general rule is to put either zero or one. So either your mesh is going to be plastic right now at zero, or if you want our ship to be metallic, we can put one and now our ship looks more metallic. So the next thing we're going to talk about is roughness. Once again, we're going to create a variable so we can take a look how it looks. And this is basically going to make how rough your material is or in other way, how shiny it's going to be. So if it's, it's going to be very, very shiny, we can see it reflects absolutely everything in super reflective material. And for example, if we put one, once again, we are going between one and zero. But for the roughness, you can play. It can be any number between zero and one. So we can see it's now very, very rough and it's not reflecting almost anything. And we can put again, like we can put like zero five. We can put it like semi rough. And I think this looks really, very nice for our chef. So the last parameter that we can control, I also mentioned normal, but normal, we can't really control. And I can show you, this is something we're going to use the textures for. So the emissive color is something that it gives glow. And cool thing about Lumen, the newest lighting technology in Unreal Engine, it also the object works as a light and it's gonna give the light around the surrounding object. Let's hold number key three. Let's create a color. And let's connect to emissive. And let's make it green, for example. 
and let's compile it and we can start see that our object is now glowing it acts as a light source and it's actually giving light around it but we can see there is no giving much flexibility we don't actually know how bright it is and one thing we can do we can actually adjust intensity and how you can do is you can create a variable again and in other engine they use something called multiply so it's going to multiply this light with that number which is going to be intensity and we can put it as emissive and for example if we compile it we can see there is no color at all because it's at zero so and if we put at one we can see now it's very very lit and we can put like smaller numbers if you want some object to shine a tiny bit we can see now there's a smaller glow or you can go super extreme and let's put it 100 emissive color is something we're going to use for our star wars sword now it's if you want to make some kind of radioactive object you can just put really high number and it looks awesome let's put it back to the zero and we can see one interesting thing in unreal engine the camera has auto exposure so whatever it's you're looking at something that's very very bright the camera automatically adjusts and once for example the light source the light disappears then the camera again automatically adjusts the exposure so everything is all the time perfectly lit these parameters are controllable and we're going to take a look into that a bit later so one thing you have noticed is right now that with these basic values there's no much of flexibility the whole ship is in the same color and there are multiple ways how you can solve the problem so for example i can made small example project here which has multiple materials applied so right for this one if you open our detail panel i can just make it a bit bigger we can see that only one material is applied to the whole ship for this one if you open up the detail we can see we have five materials zero one two three and four we have five different materials and we could just apply a lot of materials to make each piece for example these weapons probably would need different material again this 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 but where's the problem why you almost never unless it's a very badly optimized model you're never going to see that to any artist to do is every material gets updated every frame so right now for example if we enable our frames so we can see we have 60 five 70 frames per second so every frame so it means like 65 times a second these materials get updated every time under engine just make sure that this ship has the same materials applied and they are same color and nothing has changed so when you have a lot of objects with a bunch of materials it's gonna hit your performance like crazy and your scene gonna lag and if you're making a game then that's even more crucial than for example like making a scene for stills one of the things how we can optimize this is we are using textures to color the object so right here we are something called textures and we can open it up one of the textures i can make it just full screen and this texture is actually something very very weird not always you're gonna see but i just want to include this because now this approach gets a bit more popular since unreal engine supports virtual textures and this is called Udim texture so there are multiple ways how you can create your textures again you can make one big texture let's say 4k 8k 16k or whatever one big texture or you can split it in multiple small ones for example instead of creating one big 8k texture you can split it in multiple 2k textures but where the problem is if you have multiple textures it means that you guessed right you need to create mid material for each texture set you have so in unreal engine it supports something called udim workflow and it means that it combines all these two k textures into the single one so you can use them in a single material and we can take a look how it looks so let's delete the color for now and let's start with the base color i'm just gonna unplug these for now so let's connect the base color now we can see we have multiple colors you can see this this has different color than the rest of the ship this is actually more red as i model this i can tell you actually this looks a bit different than this one we're gonna later when we adjust the roughness in metallic we're gonna see this actually looks a bit different and this also looks a bit different than the rest of the ship then we have windows again this is different so we already would have four different materials that we would need to use to color the ship but instead we have one one row call perfect optimization it doesn't look very nice so next thing 
we can do is we can add roughness and metallic map. One of the kind of like optimization, it saves some VRAM and it's combined textures. So if we put this one here, it has multiple channels. This texture actually is layered with three different textures. If we delete this, so this first one, there's no information here, but it's actually called ambient occlusion. The next one going to be roughness map. And then we have, we have metallic. We can see they're all one texture consists of three layered. If you ever work Photoshop, it's just each RGB channel has its own texture. Or sometimes you can just see them split. I have here the same thing is just right now it's split here. So whatever you prefer, whatever you can see, I just wanted to mention because because you're going to see different models. But this two textures by connecting like this. Going to look, let's compile it so you can see it looks exactly the same thing. Right. Don't worry, it looks bad. We can adjust it in a second. It's exactly like the same as as we connect. You can go over this if you select. We can see it consists of occlusion, roughness, and metallic. So it means like occlusion is re red, roughness is going to be green, and metallic is going to be blue. So roughness. And we're going to connect metallic. And if we compile, it looks the same. Only way how you can know if your texture is layered or not is by opening up. For example, if we can open this one up, and we, if we start to play with channels, we can see that nothing is changing in each channel is the same texture, right? We can see that roughness is across every single channel. So that's why it's like a single texture. And once again, if you go back to this one, we open it up. We can see that there is this and this looks different. Again, that's his small optimization thing. It saves VRAM. So the next thing is. We have emissive. If we connect emissive color right here and we compile, we can start to see that our windows has a small glow and that's how it should be. And the top and the bottom and also here is going to have a glow. So before I'm adding the normal map, there's one fix we need to make. And this is going to be the fix you always going to need to make whenever you're importing the textures. So for now, we're just going to delete this texture. And if you're going to move this a bit sideways. So what we need to do is we need to check if sRGB is disabled for roughness, metallic and normal. So basically sRGB needs to be enabled only for emissive and the base color. We can double check it. sRGB is enabled. sRGB is enabled. Great. For the normal. Usually for the normal it automatically disables. But when it comes to roughness, ambient occlusion and metallic it leaves. And that usually gives inaccurate look of your metallic and roughness textures because of this parameter. So we're going to disable it and we're going to re-import this. And we're going to connect it back. I don't know if you can tell in a screen, but it looks way more accurate how it was in Substance Painter. That's just something you always keep in mind when it comes to metallic, roughness, ambient occlusion. All these textures you always need to disable it because otherwise it just doesn't give the correct colors. Let's import our normal map. So right now here, for example, we can tell kind of that there should be some kind of detail, but right now it's flat and it's absolutely nothing. It's just lines. So if you connect the normal and we compile it, we can see now we have kind of like a welding part and we can see it's now having extra details everywhere across the model. Basically just normal map gives extra detail to your model that you don't need to sculpt. You can just Put it in the texture and the model actually looks more detailed than it actually is. And so the next thing what we can do, we can do two things. So remember every time we want to make a change, we need to recompile and tweaking material settings doesn't seem fun. What we can do, we're going to create something called instance material. You just go in your material, make a right click and, cr and click create material instance. We just going to apply this material to our default static mesh. We open up our ship. We're just going to put it here. We're going to save. If you click, it automatically applies. If not, you can just press reset default settings and it should appear here. So right now, so if you open up this material, there's like nothing much here. It just shows the parent, which is 
this material, but there's no nothing we can really adjust. So let's open up parent right now. And as we before we did with basic materials, let's start to add some parameters. For example, we want to adjust the color of the ship. Like we love the texture, but we want to customize it. So what we can do by holding three, let's make a color while holding M. We're going to collect, connect this, connect, and we're going to put in a base color. Now we can compile and save. The thing is the black means it's going to turn black. So our ship to turn in the material color, you need to set the color to the white. So now we go here, there is nothing new here. We can't adjust color here. And it's because we need to change this variable to parameter, to actual parameter. So how we can do this is we're just going to make a right click. We're going to click convert the parameter, give a name. I'm going to call my color. And now if you go here, we have a new parameter here. We can enable color. You'll need to enable. We can play around. And now we can see if we are moving this around, the changes happens real time. We don't need to compile anything. And we can see everything real time. Let's, let's add, for example, a bit blue to our color to make it more look more like grayish, something like that. Now we can do the same thing with other parameters. Let's again, while holding one, let's add two variables. Then let's add two multiplies while holding M, make a click. Let's connect these. Let's connect to the A. And we can do the same thing to this one. And now, also oh, this is metallic. This is going to be a roughness. And now we can choose, we can go to this variable. And we can convert it to parameter. We can select set default values if we want. We could select set default value to one. And this one we can set also, let's say to one for now. We can enable, let's say roughness. And for example, if we think that this ship is not shiny enough, we can add shine, we can remove shine. We can play with it. And the same for metallic. If we feel like it's something is not right, we can just disable metallic and make it maybe a bit more rough. There is a way how to control the normal, but in most cases you will not. One of the cool things we would like to control is a Mitsu color. And what you can do is we can do two things. We could add color to it first. We're going to convert the parameter and we can call it a Mitsu color. We're going to multiply these two. And then we're going to add a variable. That we're going to call. Let's see the intensity. And we can add to the color. And let's set this one to white. Again, so the default color is applied. And now if we go here, we can select emissive intensity. We can make it as bright as we want. Let's set it to like 20. And you can also set the color. But the color is a bit tricky. If the default color, I need to kind of explain. If the default color of this would be white, then the color you would sit here would be the actual color here. But since this is red, this is green, it actually it's going to mix. And it's actually not doing much because the default color is not white. But for objects that has default color white, it's going to set up color very nicely. So for example, what I have done for our Star Wars sword, and we can see that right now it's red. But if I open the missing material, if I open the material, this is going to be the light. So you can see that right now it's set to red and I can set any color I want because default texture is white to the sword. So I can set any color. You can be able to set any color for your double blade sword and the same as for the ship. You can be able to adjust intensity. Next step is optional, but I will use Mesh to Meta Human plugin to give my Meta Human a unique look. Well, I'll use my face scan mesh for this process. You can use any face scan mesh or even face mesh from characters that are available in Unreal Engine Marketplace or any other asset store as they follow the same steps. For that, we're gonna need to install MetaHuman plugin for the marketplace. Let's open up our Epic Game Launcher 
and then go to the marketplace. In the search tab, search for the MetaHuman and choose MetaHuman plugin. Then click Install to Engine and choose Unreal Engine 5.1. Click Install. After you have downloaded the plugin, it's time to install it in our project. Go to Edit, Plugins, and search for MetaHuman. Enable plugin, click Yes, and restart the project. After that, in our project, let's make a new folder. Let's call it My Mesh. Then get any face mesh, or you can even use the full body character and import it to Unreal Engine by dragging it in. Click Reset to Default and import into the scene. Here, most important thing is to check if the face orientation is correct. We can drag the mesh into the scene, and we can see that My Mesh is not correct. What we can do is by using the rotation tool, we can make necessary adjustments. So for example, for me, I needed to rotate my head mesh for 90 degrees for it to face the right direction. Now how we can fix this is we're gonna delete this, we can delete imported files, and we're gonna re-import the mesh again. We can make necessary corrections. For example, I can make my X rotation for minus 90 and my Z rotation for minus 30 and get a press import. And now I drag my mesh into the scene, we can see that the mesh is facing the right direction. Next, we need to create MetaHuman Face Generator. Right click, MetaHuman, select MetaHuman Identity. Give it a name. The identity name will be used as a MetaHuman name. You can change the name later in the MetaHuman Creator. To open it up, it will require to sign into your Epic Game account. Once you are done, the next steps are straightforward as they are placed in order, and you can't access the next before completing the previous one. Click Components for Mesh and find Imported OBJ Face Mesh. Then on the left side, click Body and choose the height and the body size for your MetaHuman. Click Natural Pose, then let's change the view mode from Lit to Unlit. We also need to change the camera field of view from 45 to 20. Now center your face and then click Promote Frame. I usually like to give my frames a name. Now right click on the frame name and select Auto Tracking On. After tracking is done, right click again and enable Lock Camera. Now we can zoom in and move the frame around without changing camera position. Then, click MetaHuman Identity Solve that will create the MetaHuman head based on our face mesh. By pressing A and B, we can toggle between meshes. For most situations, base tracking points will be enough to get good results. On the right side you can see there are additional tracking points you can add. Play around with additional tracking points and see if it brings extra detail to your MetaHuman. Sometimes any extra tracking points can break mesh. For new tracking point changes to take effect, you need to press MetaHuman Identity Solve again. This will regenerate mesh based on the tracking points. Unless you are making character with iconic ear shapes like vampires, I wouldn't recommend using ear tracking points as this will require creating extra frames and will take a lot of time to align the points properly. We can make minor ear adjustments later inside MetaHuman Creator. Once you're happy with your head mesh, you can press Mesh to MetaHuman. Now Unreal Engine will generate your face mesh and upload it to the MetaHuman Creator web-based virtual machine. In this section, we will create our MetaHuman base mesh. Well, I'll be using MetaHuman with the custom face mesh, the same customization steps also apply to the template meshes if you choose to use any pre-made mesh as your base mesh. As we are working with Unreal Engine 5, we will be using the latest MetaHuman Creator. If you want to use Unreal Engine 4 for your project, you can use original MetaHuman Creator, but this version is not compatible with a custom face mesh and you only can use provided templates. You can find your custom MetaHuman in My MetaHuman section. Select your MetaHuman and press Edit Selected. Here you can change your MetaHuman project name if you don't like the name you gave during the identity step. Before I make any facial adjustments, I usually like to apply the skin first. You can adjust your skin color and choose different textures by moving the slider. The slider is a bit confusing since you are choosing different textures by moving it instead of blending textures. Go through all the options and choose the closest one that fits your skin. After that, you can go to blend section and improve any facial detail that have not translated during your face mesh generation. One great option here is that you can mix your face mesh with the parent mesh by choosing at least three parent meshes. The benefit to this is you can choose parent meshes with the features that resemble the look you're going for. Then you can mix them together to tweak your face as you like. This step can take a while, but it can help you truly to get the look you want. 
You can also adjust the body proportions in case if you want to change body size or body type. One important setting here is a head scale. As changing the body size and type, you generate a head size can either be too small or too big. To get the size right, I would suggest you to take a screenshot of your character and compare your body proportions to this photo. This will help you to get a better idea of how you need to scale your head comparing to the rest of the body. One last thing we need to make sure is that top and bottom are set to none and shoes are set to flip-flops. As I'm not planning to have any grooming assets for my dark mole, I'm gonna remove any grooming asset from my metahuman. After you're done with your metahuman, you can go back. So now we have ready to import metahuman in our project. Let's go to the windows and click Quixel Bridge. Then go to metahumans. My MetaHumans. In case if you don't see My MetaHumans section, make sure you have you're logged in in your Epic Games profile. Then let's click on your MetaHuman. Select any quality you want. So usually you need to choose between medium and high. I can put the highest quality, and then just press download. So once the download is done, we can press add, and it's gonna put up a notification about missing plugins. It's totally normal, just press enable missing for three of them and the restart engine gonna pop, just restart your project. So once we have downloaded our MetaHuman, it's time to start to customize it. We're gonna keep customization very simple for this course, but if you want to give your MetaHuman a truly unique look, I suggest to check my MetaHuman course, where I walk you through the process of modifying MetaHuman body, texturing, creating custom outfit and grooming assets. Let's go to the MetaHuman folder. Let's go to MetaHuman, Dart Mall, and open up Dart Mall Blueprint. We go to the viewport, we can see our character. Right now, it's there's like nothing much happening. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the body. We're gonna start with the body. And here, if you click on the body, it selects the body mesh, is we're gonna open up the material as before. Every time you click something, there is a detail section and it shows what kind of materials are applied. So we're going to start with the body. Let's click on the body and double click this material. So now we can see this is a child material, the same how we did for the ship, just more complicated with a lot of parameters that we can change here. For now, we're not going to touch anything. We can scroll down and there's a parent. We click and we can see this material is a parent, another child material. It can sometimes happen, so we scroll down and we click again. And now we have reached the master material of the body. And as I told you before, materials can get very, very complicated and I'm not gonna dive into what's exactly happening here. But we can see there is just a lot of customization options. But what we're gonna do is we're going to set up a logic so we can give our metahuman a dark mode look. What we're going to do is we're going to move this right here. This is the color main. If we go to the child material, we can see this is the base color. The same as we had for ship, this is the base color. So we're going to take out the base color and we're going to kind of modify it a bit. We're going to make a copy, press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and we're going to rename this to color mask. So we're gonna use a mask texture to give our metahuman a color. And in a second, it's gonna make sense. So for now, we're just gonna put color mask here. Now, we're gonna add two color parameters. So while holding number three, we're gonna click twice and we're just gonna convert them to parameters and we're gonna put color one, color two. So next, we're gonna add multiply and we're gonna multiply mask with color one and color two. For now, I'm just gonna set default values for both of them to white. Same thing for this. We can add another multiply. We're gonna multiply this, this, like this, and then we're gonna click this. As before, we are multiplying color with color one and color two. To get them together, we're gonna use something called add. So you can see that actually the programming language in our religion is blueprints or real working materials. It's actually works like in English. You just search for something that makes what you would say. So you want this color to add to this one. So that's what we're gonna do. This color mask, we're gonna multiply with this. 
One cool thing is if you hold control, you can grab this pin, plug it in here, plug it in here, and we can plug it in here. So if we compile now and save, now we can see that we have two parameters, color one, color two, and somewhere we need to have also the color mask. To make it things organized, as we can't now find it, what you can also quickly do is select color mask, and we can go to the group and create a new group. Let's call it mask. Let's set it to the mask. Let's select this one, and we're gonna select group mask, like this, and we're gonna also choose the mask group. We're gonna compile it and save it. And now if you go, they're nicely put together. So now how we can modify this? It's very simple. Let's enable our mask. Let's click back to the folder. Let's go back to the main folder and let's go to the Star Wars folder, the one that I provided. Go to Darth Maul, go to texture, and we can see we have two masks here. So click on this on the body mask, make sure it's selected. Now we can go to the child material and we can click this arrow and it's automatically going to apply. And now we can set up the colors. So if you want to use the same colors as I have, I can show them on the screen. So we're going to set up the color value. So color one going to be this. For color two, I'm going to use this value. And we go to our dart mall. You can see that color is applied and you can just Tweak the numbers of the color if you don't like it. This is just something I used. And now once this is done, we're going to do the same thing for the face. But the face is going to be just a tiny bit more difficult. So we're going to go to face. We can again open this material. We go to parent. Open it up. Scroll down. And open it up again. And we're going to go here with the base color. So here it's going to be a bit more difficult because I will show you something. If you select a face, open it up. I just going to go to animations and disable the bones. We are animating the face. We can see we have wrinkles. And under Engine, they do something. They use actually multiple textures to get wrinkles. They're not actually, your face is not getting deformed right now. It's just it transitions from one texture to the other one. So we need to make sure that when we customize character, customization also happens when it switches between wrinkle maps. We can see here, this is color main, the base color. These three are wrinkle maps. So we're gonna need to make a change right here. And how we're gonna do this is we can actually copy all this right here. We can just select everything except this one. We don't need this. We select this. While holding shift, you can select this and this, and we can press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. We're going to put it here, and now what we're going to do is, we're going to grab this pin from right here. This is where you're going to put multiply, and we're going to plug it as a default. So from here to multiply, and then as a default. Now we can apply, and then we can go back to the child material of the pick. Uh, again, let's scroll up till we find the mask section and go again to the base. Make sure you have selected a face. Go back, click the arrow, and we can put the colors again. But the next thing we're going to see is if we start to go away from our character, it switches LODs and our new effect has disappeared. So how we can fix this is we go back to the face, we open the face mesh, we can scroll down right here to where it's written LOD zero. So it's under the LOD picker. Then we can open up sections. And here we can start to switch between LOD zero to LOD one. We open up LOD one sections and we can switch this head LOD one shader to head shader shader. And we need to do this for all LODs, LOD2. Go back. Now we don't have that weird thing. So the next do is modify the eyes. And it's like, again, very easy to do. Select the head mesh. And if you scroll down here, we have eye materials. Let's open one. 
and let's open two. So now we're going to move this one so we can see the eye. And if you scroll down here, we can change two parameters. We can change the saturation. We can make it very saturated. And then we can start to play with these. So I'm going to put this at max and this is this is what's going to give us yellow eyes. And if you go back to character, same thing for other one. Once again, we're just going to bring saturation to the max. We're going to bring this down. We're going to put this here and 0 0.37. And now our eyes are yellow. We can still see that our human has annoying underwear and that just looks stupid. Well, I can't share you the body mask that actually gets rid of this. And I have actually, in my course, I'm showcasing how you can remove this using Substance Painter. There's one workaround that actually works pretty well for our character. It's not going to work for the human, but for this particular character, it actually works pretty well. So make sure that you select body, open it up, and here, under the underwear, color underwear, we can select, like, we can search for black mask. And we can select this one. And if you select this, we can see now that our underwear is black. So, and it's actually blends pretty well with the rest of the character. So when we're going to have outfit on, it's not going to be noticeable. But in my course, I showcase how you can actually fully get rid of it, mask it out, so you don't need to ever worry about it. What we're going to do is, for now, we're just going to remove these flip-flops. So we have flip-flops, you can just click or just click on the feet, select it, and press clear for now. So the last three, what we're going to do is, we're going to add horns to it. And again, it's actually pretty easy to do. So we're going to select body right here. We're going to click add and we're going to click static mesh. Then here in the static mesh window, we can search for, for horn, dark mouth bone horns. They're again included into the project and nothing really happened. So even if we compile and save, nothing has happened and they are actually here down. And what we can do in Unreal Engine, there is something called parenting. So if you go back again to the skeleton right here, I can just open it up and we have these bones with different names. This is head, neck. We can actually parent objects to specific bones. So it's very useful when, for example, you're going to need to animate something, then item that is attached, for example, to the head bone, it's going to follow the same animation as where the head is going. So what are you going to do is we're going to select that static mesh that we just created. And there is called parent socket right here. And if we click this search icon and we search for head, we click on head, we can see it immediately has now attached this mesh to the head. Now, only thing that we need to fix is orientation. So if you scroll, we go up, we can select, set it to minus 90, or you can set it here, minus 90. You compile and save. Now we can see the horns are in place. So now we are finally ready to start to make our own map. Again, in Content Browser, let's create a folder called Map. Then we're going to go to File, New Level, and Empty Level. We're going to create a brand new empty level and we're going to add everything on our own. Let's press Create. So now we're going to go to File, Save Current Level. We're going to go to the map. We're going to set name Star Wars Scene. So the first thing we do is we're just going to add all the necessary lighting and fogging stuff that we usually would have and we're just going to tweak the settings later. So we're going to go to the windows, environment light mixer, and we can just drag it here. And what are you going to do? It's going to click and absolutely everything you see. We're just going to add uh, skylight, atmosphere light, clouds, bump. Nice. Now our scene, we can see we have directional light, fog, Atmosphere, skylight, volumetric clouds. We're just going to later just touch it what exactly it means. But so the next thing I would usually do is like create a base for my scene. So I'm going to go to the landscape and we can create a landscape here. And there's again different parameters that we can tweak here. 
And I'm going to set the uh, scene to from 63 to 31 quads. And now you're just going to check the section to 2. So it kind of makes it more detailed in case if I want to sculpt something. In this particular scene, I'm actually planning not to sculpt too much. But it's just this, usually kind of this is the basic settings I usually set. And we can press create. But on the landscape, cool thing is we can sculpt things if we need. Again, with Ctrl Z, you can reset while holding shift we can actually sculpt in but this is kind of like the basic landscape that i'm going to use and i'm going to build things around it what we can do next is get some kind of landscape material anything you want doesn't matter and with the best place to find assets is in the quick cell bridge so we go back again where we download the meta human to the windows quick cell bridge and here you're free to use any assets you see. So we can find, let's say, Landic. And for example, I like, I want something like this. Being my background material. You can select any quality you want. I just can set mine to high quality. And press download. So after the download is done, we can press add. So it's going to automatically add here. Then we can switch from the landscape mode to selection. Select your landscape and then we can just drag, take this material and drag it here and it apply. Currently it looks weird. It kind of looks like these squares and there's very easy fix for that. We're just going to open up this material and there is something called tilling. We're just going to click that and these two numbers just change to something lower like 0 0.03. We can change for both. And we can see it's right away sized up. And then just play with these numbers, whatever works for your scene. Right now, I'm just going to leave this like it is. And I'm going to fix this later when our scene is going to start to get ready. The first thing I usually do is in displaced actors. If you don't see this, then we can go again to the windows. Placed actors. We're going to go in the cinema cinematic section. And we're going to grab cinematic camera actor. And while cinematic camera actor is selected, it shows what exactly that camera sees. So we can rotate for 180 degrees. So you can always find it in your outliner. And we can start kind of start to set up our scene. I can move my camera up because I want my landscape be a bit more up. And this is just going to be like a backpack. Next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up. Usually what I love to do, and this is really depending again from your computer specs, is I usually, if you have second monitor, you can open up another viewport. Usually then in perspective, I change this to cinematic view, then I switch to the camera, and usually I enable grid to align my object. So for now, I'm just going to put it side by side. Usually I put this as my second. So if you don't want your camera to get messed up, what I would do is make a right click, change, go to transform and click lock camera movement. So it doesn't move. And usually if you want to move the camera, you just unlock it. The next setting we can change is film back to DSLR. This is going to get kind of a bit wider shot. Then we can add later on play with aperture, but that's something we're going to touch later. So now that finally it's time to bring our metahuman and our spaceship into the scene. So let's go to the content. Let's go to metahumans. Start ball. And let's grab our metahuman. Let's grab it here. Let's put it up. Then we're going to go to content. Star Wars. And I'm just going to bring our ship inside the scene. And again we can just move this i believe my ship gonna be here and my character gonna be here and this is kind of like getting the starting point of how we're gonna set things up now we can go back to the quick cell bridge and start to build our asset library for the scene and now you can just choose any asset you want download it and start to layer up your scene so i'm just gonna briefly show for example how we could do the front could even use this it's already downloaded for me so inches here with it 
quality, you can set low quality, medium, high quality, or nanite. And we need the nanite for this. So we're just going to add. So once we have downloaded all the assets and we have put our main actors, the ship and the dark mall into the scene, it's time to finally set up our scene. And as I'm setting up my scene for the still, it's actually a pretty straightforward process. So I just need to populate this scene with assets. So for example, if you're making an animation sequence, then again, you're going to plan your shot, how your camera is moving, and you're going to put your assets accordingly. It's very important to plan your shots beforehand. So you don't need to do extra work. So I'm going to grab this asset right here. Just start very quickly set up the scene. You actually don't need a lot of different kind of assets actually to populate the scene. So I'm just going to have this. I'm going to reuse the same one. And cool thing, what you can do is you can mirror something the other way. By, for example, if I want this cliff to be actually this side, as you can see, this side we don't have anything, this side we have cliff, we can actually unlock this, make sure it's unlocked, and we can do minus Y, because we can see the Y, the green arrow is this side, and immediately it mirrors to this side. Now the hole is in this side, and this is here. So I can now move this to my scimitar and for example I want to have it a bit bigger I can just lock it and let's put it to for example 30. this looks nice and you just start to slowly set up your scene and here really I'm keeping the scene very very simple by layering the assets in front of the camera so the main goal is just to reach the assets to avoid the flat looking scene Try to make some interesting gaps between the rocks so the sun comes in and makes your scene more interesting. Don't be afraid to leave some extra negative space since we can fill it up with other assets like spaceships. As you can use my scene as a reference, there's no really right or wrong way to do it and I would encourage you to experiment with assets and share your results on my Discord channel. And beautiful thing about Unreal Engine and real-time rendering is you can always make extra corrections later on. After we have set up our basic scene, it's time to generate HDR image for our lighting. One of the places you can do it for free is Blockade Labs. It's AI powered image generator where you can just input keywords and it will create image for you. Experiment with different keywords or you can just regenerate the same ones and it will give you different results. Once you're happy with your image, you can press download. Then we need to open image in software like Photoshop. Almost every photo editing software will work where you can set image as 32 bit. Let's unlock the layer, then go to image, mode and select 32 bit. Then go to file, save a copy, and give it a name and then change the type to radiant. Then we can open our project Create a new folder and import HDR image. Then we can select the skylight and we can apply this background in a cube map. And we can see immediately the light changed here. We go, it's a bit darker and now it's a bit brighter. And now what we can do is we can start to tweak the lighting settings. The thing I usually do is I start with the directional light. Press Ctrl L and we can move the direction or light. And usually when I'm set setting up like the late evening night scenes, how I set up my direction of the light is I'm making sure that light comes from the back, is bringing that silhouette around our character. And I think personally for me, I love this look at night and it really brings out the, the character. We need one more thing in our scene. Let's leave the camera for now. And that's called post-process volume. And this basically overrides almost everything in the scene. Your camera setting, your light settings, and everything else. Something that we want to rewrite is our auto exposure. Remember how we thought before when we see really bright light, the camera adjusts, and when it's dark, it adjusts. But something we want is to have full control of how scene looks, and we want the scene look every time the same. What we can do is first, we're going to make sure this post-process material applies to whole scene, and we're going to search for 
and we can check this because otherwise if you don't check this these settings from the process process volume you can apply only when you enter this cube once you exit settings not gonna apply so next we can search for exposure so once we find exposure we're gonna click this and we can switch our exposure to the manual now our scene is completely black and that's how it should be we can en enable exposure compensation and we're gonna click this and we can disable apply physical camera exposure and now our light start to look how it should right now it looks very very dark we're gonna fix this slowly by adjusting the other settings and see now we can see that silhouette and again if you feel like it you need to move it a bit more and it kind of changes and this is perfect now i can start to adjust some directional light settings that i kind of usually use and i have used already before in this scene i'm gonna give some color a bit more dish to the light then i'm gonna increase indirect lighting and we can see that the bounce light is getting a bit more up i'm gonna put maybe something like five then i'm gonna increase this Right now, it's not going to do anything, but later when we apply the fog, we can start to see effect. So next thing we're going to want to add is our skylight. Let's click that. We can see it starts to light up objects that were in the shadow before. And I'm going to start to tweak some parameters. So we already configured this. We added the cube map. I can change the angle. So we can see the angle changing and it gets brighter. I'm going to change it to something like 250. Then I'm going to change the intensity to something like 5. Brighter. And now we can see our scene is getting way more brighter than before. And I'm going to adjust the light color. Something more bluish. Is that something like we usually see in the movies? That scenes in the evening are have that bluish tone. So something I could do. And now we can see our actually our rocks start to give have that photorealistic look so next clouds and sky atmosphere there's not much we can change in actually clouds but we can make a changes in sky atmosphere so i can change this to 32 and else can stay as a default the last thing last parameter we can play with is exposure high fog and that's what's actually gonna make your scene to look really realistic so before we are touching any parameters here, first thing we want to do is enable volumetric fog. As you can see, we can't see fog. We enable this and we can start to have fog. And now we can start to tweak these numbers. And it's again just comes down to your personal liking. I'm going to put this at 0 0.12. I can change this to 0 0.9. Start to see we are losing the fog, but we're going to bring it back in a second. And here again, it's more of a creative choice. Play with parameters and take a look what works best with your scene. As my assets like plain and rocks are bluish, then I'm playing here with opposite colors and I'm trying to make the fog a bit orange so the colors complement each other. Once we have set up our scene, next thing we can do is and just finish up our character we can see our character is not standing out the main lighting for our character is going to come from our lightsaber we can add outfit and then we can add few extra details that's just going to make our scene look more realistic so let's start with our character if you go to our star wars folder and we go under animations there is a walking animation that i have provided for you if you see some kind of weirdnesses, make sure that here Intel normal body is selected. If not, we click here, find normal body, click and press update. If you see some kind of animation issues, this is how you need to fix. We can fix here too. We can apply to asset. And we can see our character walking. This is going to be basically our animation for our character with a sword. So how you add weapons to your character is the same how we did with the horns we need to attach the sword to the bone we go here with the skeleton tree we're gonna search for hand so the way how we can add weapons we have two choices we can either bend it with the hand r how we did for example for 
our horn where we put to the head socket and then adjust it in a blueprint. Or we can actually make adjustments right here in the skeleton tree. So how we can do this is we're going to select hand R. So this is the hand bone. We're going to make a right click and we can choose add socket. We're going to press F2 to rename it. And we're going to give it the name weapon. Then we're going to make a right click on the weapon. We're going to click add preview asset and we can search for or blade. And now we can see our sword is not properly aligned to our hands. We can start to make our adjustments. We need to rotate a bit. Then we can put the moving tool and we're just gonna move it here. And you can just go closer and make kind of slightly adjustments where you want your weapon slot. And this looks pretty decent. So now we can save this. And now if we go we click our character and we can press here, edit dark model blueprint. The same as we did before. You go to the body, select body, then we go to here, add, static mesh. We're going to call it sword. Then we can search for blade. We're going to click blade. And again, blade is somewhere on the ground. And then we're going to select weapon. And we can see the weapon is attached to our arm. Compile, save, and now our character also has a sword. So now to make our character use animation that I have provided, in the content browser, we're going to create a new folder, in the call it, cinematics, you can call it whatever you want, video, animations, whatever. And we're going to create cinematic sequence. So we're going to make a right click, we're going to go to cinematics, and we're going to create level sequence. Give it a name, you can leave it as default. I just gonna leave it as a default. Now we can open it up. This is basically a timeline, nonlinear editing, like it's in Premiere Pro, Da Vinci, or wherever. So, what you can do is we're gonna grab our character, you're just gonna drag and drop it here. And now we can see we start have option. We have control rig to make our character to control its posture and face. In this example, I'm not going to do anything with the body because we're going to use animation. So I'm going to select human control rig here and just going to press delete. But we're going to leave the face for now. So now on the body, we're going to click track, animation, and search for sword. And select it. We can see we have animation. Our character is missing two more things. We need boots and we need outfit. So for the boots, we can click here, we can actually switch from the animation mode to selection mode. We can select our character, go to outline, and here in the outline, we can select character, we're going to go to the blueprint, and we're going to go back to viewport. We're going to select feet, and we can search for boots. Here it is, dark mode boots rigged. Something again I have provided, compile and save. These are fully rigged boots and they're gonna work with our character. For the outfit, I have chose to do something else that I wanna show you. And there are two ways how you can make clothes for your character. You can either rig them and you're gonna have a lot of rigged outfits. But this is very good approach for, for example, games, because you want to play different animations for your character. But for example, for the stills and movies, you kind of have already pre-planned animations. There's something we use Alembic workflow, where we basically bake animation inside outfit, and we get more realistic look because the wrinkles are more real. In rig characters, you don't because actual clothes is actually not deforming in such a way where it's creating wrinkles and other realistic looking stuff. That's kind of a trade-off. With Alemic workflow, they are baked with certain animation you can't use with other ones, but it has more realistic look. Or you can have rigged outfit, which works with any animation you have ever want, but it's gonna have less real look and it just really comes with individual preference. If I'm creating stills or small animation videos, I always go for a Lambic one because it's just clothes gonna look way more realistic. What you're gonna do is, again, we go to content, Star Wars. We're gonna go to Dark Mall, Outfit, and here in the Outfit folder, 
we have Darth Maul outfit. We're just going to drag and drop here. We're going to click character. We're going to go to location. We're going to copy location. Like this. And paste. And then we're going to go again to the character. We're going to copy rotation. Select outfit. And we're going to paste outfit. Then we're going to grab outfit. Now we can see the outfit has aligned with our character. And we're going to drag and drop it here. Then we're going to click on the outfit. Go to the track. And we're going to choose geometry cache. Let's move to the zero. And we can see that outfit is not perfectly aligned. And this is something that is an issue usually with Marvel as designer. Because it's always one frame off. And how we can fix this is we're going to go to the body. We're going to click on this animation file. We're going to make a right click. Go to properties. And we can be like selection range start. We're going to put minus one. And now our outfit is perfectly aligned with our character. My Olympic file is actually way longer than the character animation. What you can do is, well, you can click here. We're holding alt. We can drag it and we can extend our walking animation multiple times. And now you create very, very long walking fastly and you see some kind of weird clipping right now. It's actually editor glitch and you're not going to see this kind of problems when you're going to render out your final image. So don't worry about the clipping here. So next thing we can do is we can add facial expressions to our character because right now it's really generic and nothing much is happening. So we have two ways. Let's make a save how we can add expressions. We click this facial control rig. What we can do is we can use this control rig to move our face and give him some kind of facial expression. If that's the approach you want to go, you can do it. Or you have facial expressions that already come with our meta human. And it's actually pretty easy to access them. So if you go to poses right here, make sure the control rig is selected. We go to poses. The new window gonna appear and we're gonna search for insult, search for anger, make sure you're in the content. And now we can see that there are facial expressions that are appearing. Full facial expressions right here, and there's also happy and normal face, but we can search for anger because our dark mall is always angry. I will, for example, use this anger, anger facial expression. What I can do is click on it, and now we can have extra window here. We're going to click E. The next thing we're going to click is select controls. Now it's selecting all the controls on the face that are changing to this kind of face shape. And we can click face pose. And now we can go up. We can minimize this. We can move this in the beginning. And now we can see our character has an angry face. And you can add multiple if you want your character to look differently during your whole video. We can add something like terror or satisfaction or amusement or joy. Let's find some other anger. Find, for example, from this anger, he wants to get to the rage. Once again, we can select the rage and we can just click select controls and paste pose. And now we can see it's, his face is changing. And you can again select whatever you wanted. We can extend it. And we can, get, we can see if you press play. Our character face is changing. So now our character has animation. We have clothes on. Facial expressions are saved. By the way, I just wanted to show you quickly. If you go closer, this is what I was talking about. You can see our character moving. And the whole outfit, every piece is moving. And this is something you wouldn't get if the outfit would be rigged. You could technically add simulation to these parts, but then you're never going to have the same result. So our scene looks almost perfect. And we can see now that from our lightsaber, we are getting extra light here. And that really becomes to adding just extra details to your scene that really kind of makes it more alive. What you can do is you can go back to content, make sure it's content is selected. And then you're going to click add. Add feature content pack. 
if we're going to add third person content in our scene we're going to close it we can go back to the content we can go to the characters content characters and we can search for skeletal mesh what we want is the mannequin you can add other ones too but i definitely want a mannequin in our scene because it actually looks a bit like a stormtrooper and we can add some kind of like a bodies in our scene let's say we can add here and put him down adjust it let's say we want one here let's look at the camera for instance for scene you can see now it kind of start to look a bit more alive since we have some dead stormtroopers details that we can add is for example we can make an enemy ships in our scene and as they're going to be in a far background we don't need them to be as detailed as this ship for example is we can make it more simplified so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna go to content okay let's make a new folder called spaceship open it up begin to create our first blueprint make a right click choose blueprint class choose an actor give the name enemy ship now what you can do is we can add static mesh add one static mesh we can choose Choose plane and just rotate for 90 degrees. Like this for now. Minus 50. Then we can just duplicate this plane. Move it again here. Since we don't this, see this, it's because the planes are one sided. We're going to create quickly a material. In the name of the spaceship, we're just gonna open it up the same as we did before. We're just gonna give a color, let's give something like very, very dark gray. I can add two values metallic, I can set to one. Do you want it to look metallic? We can put roughness to something like zero seven, maybe zero three. Yeah, zero three gonna work. And one thing we even choose is two sided material that's gonna solve our one-sided plane issue and then again well material selected we can go here and we can assign material to this and now we can see our kind of wings and what we can do is we can just stretch it out a bit make sure this is deselected at this at 1.5 it starts to look like a wing we can add another static mesh search for sphere just a regular sphere right here again we can apply the material that we already created you can change the size to something like 0 0.4 0 0.5 maybe yeah 0 0.5 works and we can add another static mesh and we're gonna look for the like cylinder probably this one really doesn't matter we can select to 90 we can again change the scale to 0 0.3 maybe 0 0.3 is going to work. We're going to select this. You can see it just sticks at one side. So I can just move it a tiny bit more. It's going to be 1. And again, we can apply the same material. So now we have enemy ship ready. And what we can do is we can set this cam select this camera. So we see what's happening. And we can start to put this ship out. For example, we can see the scale right now is kind of it looks too small. We can change the scale to, let's say, 100, maybe 10. I changed it, to, yeah, let's change the scale to 10, so it's roughly the same size. And we can start to move them here. Since, since you want it to be more into the fog. Here again, just fill up the negative space by moving the shapes around. Put some shapes closer, rotate them, and just make it overall interesting look. And adding some extra detail. For example, you want these ships to be aggressive. For example, we're going to find this ship 
right here. Just this, I believe. What we can do is we can add cylinder right here. Rotate that cylinder. Doesn't matter, don't need to be very accurate. Table scale. Put this one to like 50. Maybe 20. We can adjust that later. And what we can do is we're gonna create a new material again. We're gonna call it emissive. And we're gonna add emissive color here. Do this, like variable and multiply. Connect it. Add color. Let's make it red. Let's add intensity 20. And apply some missing material to this. Maybe this, we're gonna change the thickness 0.5. Five, so make it smaller and now we can add lasers and here just looking from the camera perspective I'm just kind of gonna adjust them to look like they are just shooting in some kind of direction we can add sphere here Gonna put diameter like two, or it's gonna look like it's shooting out. And now we can use the same cylinders to add even more detail. For example, say we can add one more cylinder here. Back, I make it and like zero point three, and then change a lot, like thirty. Move it back, something like here. This one I'm gonna make it a bit shorter, like 20. Make it that it hits something. Let's set these both emissives. These both emissive. It looks like it hit something. And what I can do is, I have downloaded something like this Icelandic rocks. We can add them, and right here. Where it actually hits, and we can start to organize them. They look like they have hit something. Like these lasers have hit the ground. This, we can change again the size to something smaller. Like there's particle rocks. Holy cell defect. What you can do is, we can put two rocks here. And two color to them. Glow gives that effect that actually something has been hit. Once you put down the basics, it's actually not that complicated to create interesting scene to customize actually your metahuman. It just took one mask texture to make it. And obviously there's, of course, there's some extra assets in this scene. But in general, it's very, very simple scene and I think it looks beautiful. The last thing we need to do is to render it out. To do that, we need to make a few changes. So first, we're going to find our post-process volume and we can search for motion blur. And this is really scene specific thing. You're making animation sequence. Then you're going to tweak these settings to you like and whatever looks good. But since I'm going to use this scene as a still, I don't want actually to have any motion blur because it's still gonna, during the render, it's gonna play animation of him walking. And we don't want for the steel to have any kind of motion blur around the sword. So I'm just gonna set this zero. For my steel, I don't want any motion blur to happen. And next, we need to enable a plugin. We're gonna go to plugins and we're gonna search for render queue. And here's a render queue. And we're just gonna enable it and restart the engine. Once so you're back in your scene, you're gonna need to. Open up your level sequencer once again. And now what you can do is in our sequencer and make sure you open it. We can go here and let's make sure the movie render queue is selected. Then click this. And now we can render out our scene. We're going to click on saved config file. I can change 
to JPEG to PNG, but if you want, you can render out the JPEG too. The next, we can rewrite anti-aliasing settings. And we can change, click this, or right. I can set it 8 by 8. And then, next thing we need to do, we need to add console variables. Finally, gonna copy them from Unreal Engine documentation, and I'm gonna have a link down below. So we're just gonna create one, and we're just gonna copy all four variables that we can see in documentation. Make sure not to copy the zero, because zero is already here, because otherwise it's not gonna work. Except. Now, one thing I actually forgot to do is we need to add actually camera here. So I want to render my camera number one right here. So we're going to drag that into the scene. And we can see now the camera is here. Very important, otherwise not going to know which camera to use. Now we can go back. You can click against this one. Now you can go to output. Here you can customize the output size. So for example, if I want 4K, you're just going to two times two these two values. And we're going to have 4K resolution here. Everything else looks great. I can press accept and now we can render it out. I'm just going to print it, press render local. It's going to take some time and then we can take it to the end result. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. And if you made something amazing during this course, then join my discord channel and showcase your work. Till the next time, bye!